Hello Grade 10s. In this lesson, we'll join Keke, Gerard and Rifile as they look at how to conduct fair trials and how to calculate probabilities. Pay attention to the thought processes they follow and make notes where you need to. Let's join them now. We've set the table with four cups filled with different kinds of cola. And one of these cups has koala cola in it. Yes, so what we need to do right now is find some people who can tell the difference and taste our cola. Right, but nothing tricky. See, we both know that cup number three has the koala cola in it, but they don't. So let's go see if they can figure it out. Before they start their investigation, let's work out what the probabilities are here. A person will taste cola from four different cups and then say which one is koala cola. Now, let's say you haven't got a clue, so you just guess. What is the chance that you'll be guessing the correct one? Well, there are four possibilities. It could be this one, this one, this one, or this one. So we have four possible outcomes, but only one of them has Kawola Cola in it. That means only one out of the four possible outcomes will be correct. In other words, only one out of four possible outcomes will be the favorable outcome. And the one out of four is normally written like a fraction. Probabilities are written like this. The number of the favorable outcomes out of the total number of possible outcomes. But there's one thing we need to be careful of when we use a fraction to calculate probability. Each of the possible outcomes must have an equally likely chance of occurring. That doesn't mean each outcome will occur the same number of times. It means that each outcome has the same chance of occurring. In other words, none of the possible outcomes has an unfair advantage over the others. Let me show you what I mean by using these three socks. If I take one navy sock, and two white socks, all the same size and material, and put them in a tub of water. What is each sock's chance of touching the bottom first? Well, we can't tell what the chances are until we check whether the socks are likely to sink at the same speed. We can see that the socks are the same size. We need to check if they have the same mass too. Then we would need to make sure that we drop them at the same time and from exactly the same height. So let's assume they do have the same mass and we manage to drop them into the water from the same height at the same time. Now we can say that all three socks have an equally likely chance of sinking to the bottom first. The total number of possible outcomes is three because we have three socks. So each sock's chance of reaching the bottom first is one out of three. What is the chance of a navy sock touching the bottom first? Well, the total number of possible outcomes is still three because each sock has a fair chance of sinking first. And there is only one navy sock, so the favorable outcome is one. That means there is a one in three chance of a navy sock sinking first. Now, what is the probability of a white sock sinking first? Well, the total number of possible outcomes is still three, but there are two white socks, so there are two favorable outcomes. So there's a two in three chance of a white sock sinking first. So the probability of a white sock reaching the bottom first is double the probability of a navy sock reaching the bottom first. Two thirds is double one third. But what if I fill the navy sock with sand? Now that I've heavily weighted the navy sock, the chances of it sinking to the bottom first is greater. So the chance each sock has of reaching the bottom first is no longer equal. I've given the navy sock an advantage over the white socks. It has more than a one in three chance of touching the bottom of the tub first. Because I weighted the navy sock, I have made the chance of each sock reaching the bottom first unequal to each other. In a case like this, our rule won't work anymore. We can't use the probability calculation, number of favorable outcomes out of total number of possible outcomes. This calculation can only be used when each of the possible outcomes has the same chance of occurring. Now let's go back to our cups of cola. There's no way the drinker can tell just by looking at the cups which one has which kind of cola. None of them has been given an unfair advantage over the other, so the possible outcomes are are all equally likely. That means that we can use the formula. 
favorable outcomes out of total number of possible outcomes. So, if a person has no idea which cup has the Coca-Cola cola and they just guess, they have a 1 in 4 chance of being right. Now, let's go back and see how Gerard and Refilwe are getting on with the investigation. Oh, and remember, cup number 3 has the Coca-Cola cola in it. I can tell Coca-Cola cola from other colas. It doesn't matter which one I drink first. They're all okay. But I can soon tell if it's not Koala Cola. Excellent. Right. Okay. Take a sip from each of these cups. I'm pretty sure it's this one. Very impressive. It seems like you really do know your cola. But hang on. It could have been just a lucky guess. Okay. Test me again and I won't look. Pour out some new cups and I'll have another go. But when will we be sure that she really does know her koala cola? How many times does she have to get it right? Well, look at it like this. She could have just guessed, right? She already had one in four chance of being right. Which means, on average, if a person is just guessing, they'll only get it right once in every four tries. But if a person can really tell the difference, then they should get it right more often than that. So she needs to do the test four times, and we need to see how many times she gets it right out of four trials. Hey, guys, I'm thirsty, and it's free cola, so bring it on. All right, coming up. She's right again. That's two out of four times. You know what? Let's do it again just to be sure. Alrighty. Let's see if third time is lucky. Brilliant. I think she really does know her stuff. I think we should stop right here. Three out of three is pretty convincing. Even if she, got, if she does get the fourth one wrong, it will still mean that she got three out of four correct answers. Then, Gerard and Refile did something very interesting. They added another type of cola. Now the people they test must choose from five cups. If a person is just guessing, what is the probability of him or her choosing the right cup? The number of favorable outcomes is still only one. There's only one cup of Coca-Cola. Cola. But the total number of possible outcomes has gone up to five. So a person now has one in five chances of being right. In other words, it's getting harder to be right just by guessing. It's this one. Sorry, but was that a wild guess? Try again. Mm, uh, no. I actually don't know. I think it's this one. It's definitely this one. Well done, but you have to do it again so you know you're not guessing. It's this one. By this stage, people were queuing up to be tested. Actually, I think they all just wanted some free cola. <laughs> so now, Jared and Rufila tried something different. They set up a trial using six cups. This time, three of the cups had Coca-Cola cola in them, and the other three had other kinds of cola in them. Now, let's work out if a person just guesses which one is a Coca-Cola cola. What are the chances of them being right? The total number of possible outcomes is 6, so that's our denominator. And the number of favorable outcomes is now 3, because 3 of the cups have the Coca-Cola cola. So they have a 3 in 6 chance of being right, which can be simplified to 1 out of 2, which is of course a half. So now, if a person can't tell the difference between the colas, then whatever they guess, they have the same chance of being right as of being wrong. It seems some people do actually know koala cola from other colas. But there were also quite a lot of people who actually didn't know and were just guessing. How about trying that experiment yourselves? Remember to work out what the probability is of a person just guessing and make sure they do the test a few times. Their number of correct guesses out of the number of tests they do must be higher than the probability of just guessing. For example, if you have four caps, then the chance of being right is one in four, which is one quarter. 
If you test a person four times and they get it right three of those four times, that's the same as three quarters. Three quarters is higher than one quarter. So you can conclude that that person probably does know which one is Coola Cola. Maybe you should try this experiment with your friends at home. It's interesting to see how to calculate the probability of randomly choosing the correct cup of cola. Why don't you test the skills you learned today by trying the task video called Introducing Probability Task Video. If you're still struggling, look at our website for more resources. Goodbye.